and then burst rotation to Oriana, which kind of blocks the Cassiopeia pick a little bit because Oriana is good against Cassiopeia in lane, especially after level 6. Uh, so that was like a smart thing Evolve did earlier today. Now it's banned. So we might see like just five mid lane bans. Yeah, many mage bans currently. And then Victor first pick. Uh, it could open up something more interesting, but yeah, you're probably right. Picks ah. are coming out. I want to see a Katarina. I still think there's a chance we see that pick. Um, it's very difficult, though. It's one of those picks that you have to spend a lot of time on to make it work. When you can just be like, ah, screw it. I'm just going to play Victor. I'm going to play like one of these meta mages that we've seen for so long. But you also want to get the Lee Sin if you are a J team to deny that from Dark. Like, even though, of course, again, that's the same thing we talked about in the last pick of Bad Face. Like, when Rek'Sai Lee Sin is open, the trade is not the greatest because you just kind of, you get one that's ST and they get one that's ST, so you don't really gain that huge of an advantage. Unless you have a Lee Sin player who can really, like, snowball the game. This is another reason, I guess, for the Oriana ban, but Rise is open. And I actually huh. think Rise is okay to pick against Cassiopeia. And you're gonna give away Lee Sin now for Dardock. So that was like the number one jungle pick for Immortals. Yeah. You didn't get. Didn't deny that from Dardock. But you banned the Oriana because you wanted to pick the Cassiopeia. We talked about how Oriana was good against Cassiopeia in the laning phase, but Rise is still enable or uh, available if Immortals wants to play it, and you can just set up like basically a tent in the mid lane, and you have a perma, not a perma, but you have a point on click snare against a. No boots, mage. We have a Lee Sin. That combo is probably going to work pretty well against Cassiopeia. Yeah, uh, I would, I would think so. Um, J team looking at each other right now, saying, "I think we have screwed up, lads." Is remake an option? Well, I don't hope they think that already. <laughs> that would be pretty bad. I assume they realized there was a chance to rise was over. I actually think Immortals really like surprised them with the Maokai ban. Like the Maokai is almost like a filler ban here. Uh, in many ways, because like you could have just banned like Poppy or something, or you sure. could have just given the Maokai and taken Poppy yourself. Doesn't really do much of a difference. My pen now. Um, so that was more like a filler ban, honestly. And it's been like, no, actually, we want to leave the Rise over and see what you want. I want to I wanna see what uh, Immortals do, or rather, J Team does with the rest of their uh, picks and bans to see if they have a plan in mind. There's the Tam Kent we saw uh, once earlier. The Ash Counter. Uh, the Ash Counter. And Poppy as well for the top lane. Boring! So take that one away from Flame. Come on, Play Rise! Rise is so broken, in. man! Rise is so broken. I don't care if you might struggle see early levels. Those crazy crits that you see from the Rise combo late game. That's what I want to see from Immortals. Because funny story, at Worlds, uh, first week of Worlds, Cassiopeia Syndra was played like 24-7. And ah. then, teams had practiced Rise like in solo queue a lot, specifically to try and play him against Cassiopeia and try and just camp the mid lane. But again, I mean, Victor is always a safe choice. La da da, yadi da da. Um, I just want to see Sparks fly. We want some crazy stuff to happen in these games, but it's fine. He's got the zero ball. He's going to be happy in the mid lane. Yeah. Zyra locked in alongside it and followed up with the Rek'Sai, of course, for the for the jungle pick from Achi. And uh, Jen will be alongside the Tam Kench in the bottom lane. So we've got the full comp there from the JT. I'm just waiting yep. on Immortals and Nautilus would be fine. Here. Yeah, I prefer that one over the Trundle just because you're playing a 1-4 comp anyway. You don't really have anyone else who want to go side lane of Victor and Ash. Keep them as a 1-4 strong team fighting composition and use that big Nautilus and his guaranteed knockup against the likes of Jin, against the likes of Cassiopeia. There's nothing more annoying as a Jin when a fight breaks out to see that Nautilus ulti come towards you because you can't even like kite around and charge up your own ulti. You have to just kind of wait for that knockup. And then there's a lot of things that can follow up. Dalek is one of them. Yeah. But also things like, you know, Victor comes in with the laser, the storm, everything. And then suddenly, as a Jin, you're pretty dead. There's really nothing you can do. So I like I like uh, Nautilus a lot against these low mobility. Yep, but they do have Tam Kench. So that could be an option. Just devour up the Jin as the depth charge is coming towards him. So very good point. That could be a thing. He's here actually to try and counter three of the picks from Immortals. The Lee Sin, so he can't kick back, you know, the yeah. squishy target. The Nautilus ulti and the Ash ulti. All trying to get denied by time. And sadly for him, he has too long cooldown. He can only can't deny one of them. That's true. All he just uh, he picks up BB and just runs away. And then <laughs> Fofo the is kind of left yeah. behind. Well, there's 
has uh, lots of things to try and block, but a lot of this will be on Jay to keep the squishy, low mobility gen alive in this game. And Jay team, they are up against it. We are on to the rift for our second game in this best of three. This is the decider, the elimination match. That's also our faces. Hello. Hello. What is going on? Ah, we have a. We don't have a pause. No, okay. they just really want to show the casters. Ah, yes, yes. Had to get us on screen one more time because this could be the final game here. Uh, elimination match, as I was saying. Uh, winner will progress onto the semi finals out of Group A. Loser will be joining yeah, Vega Squadron on a nice vacation in Korea. And in case you missed it earlier today, if you were sleeping, because some of it was very early in Europe and pretty late in North America. That's true, uh, most people will be sleeping in North America. Exactly. Uh, Samsung. Oh, let's see, let's see if Jay can. Uh, oh, force of flash. Uh, he can't devour him now, so there's not really. Not really any reason to flash oh, away. Oh, sir. Don't want to be there, really. But Pobalt is there to stop him, so it's fine. Just a bit of a, bit of a scrap to yep. start off the game. Oh, oh. Ghost uh, popped there. Morning was looking to turn the stop corner. Stop the recall! May have her up charge. Does stop the recall. This is actually quite bad from Cody, son. All right, if the kids can stop playing, we can actually talk about how Samsung has already locked the first seed from this group after they took down the models 2-0 much earlier today and that means the winner of this one obviously becomes the second seed out of group A and in case you've never ever seen a playoff bracket before second seed will play the first seed of the other group surprise surprise and that I mean will be hard to kind of figure out who that is because the other group obviously has like Congo Monster, Giants, Liquid. Team Liquid and Dark Passage like that's almost anyone's game yeah really is just have to see how they start performing tomorrow when those best of ones Tomorrow will be very interesting indeed. Because um, we've already got very two very strong teams in Group A, of course, Immortals. Yeah, Samsung. So we'll go toe to toe earlier. But for now, JT will try to shut down Immortals' hopes. Try their best. Mid lane, again, trading blows. And bot lane. Actually, JT doing a, a pretty good job currently. The problem is you're always going to take so much damage in return against like double range lanes. A good uh, QDF molly. Always important to hit both minions and the champions in the start so you get that push for level 2. If you get level 2 first on Ash Zyra, especially against like a melee support, you can just zone them off and like deal so much poke damage. One more melee minion going down and both lanes have a hit level 2 and nothing special happened. A lot of trading early on. Start level 1 actually, into level 2. Jay trying to be a sneaky catfish in the brush. Being sneaky. A sneaky catfish. Not going to be seen for now. Dardock spotted out by Void Burrower. Rek'Sai. And uh, bot lane. Uh, Ollie getting caught by pretty much everything under the sun from <laughs> Jay Team's bot lane. Uh, the tongue. The uh, random dancing grenades. And yeah. Cody's son, not really harassed at all. He's able to farm away. So, and it's hard fine. to say a whole lot about these lanes specifically. Uh, it's expected that the two v two of Ash Zyra gets the push and wins early on. Nautilus gets the push on Poppy. It's very normal as well. Mid lane goes very even. Kind of becomes a bit of a farm matchup where you don't expect to see like a solo kill. So, most of what Immortals can do is going to be around the bottom lane, especially at level six. But before that, there is not like an easy lane to gank. For Dada, because again, the Nautilus is kind of pushing in on top side. You can't dive the Poppy so easily. That's going to be real difficult. You got to gotta get a very low first. And because the bot lane is pushing, you can't really gank there either. So Dada might just have to go back and just kind of farm up for level 6 before doing a whole lot. And that's kind of where Mortals can turn on the power. And they have to respect the Rek'Sai. Archie is on his way down to the bottom lane. He is, and he's got the popcorn there ready to pop. 
Lee not in good shape. Double knock up there from Archie. And Cody Sun taking a lot of damage. Jay with the triple stacks and the devour should be surely his end. Okay, finally, BB will finish him off. Bella. Jay trying to waddle away, but I don't think it's going to happen for him. He goes down. The flash to Grouty Field. And also the stun war. Oh, Dardock to come in there. And Pobelto will finish him off for the kill. Nice three for one trade from Immortals. Yeah, J Team was just chasing that kill in the bottom lane and good response. Pobolder moving first from the mid lane. Everyone from Immortals kind of reacting instantly and they, it's almost like they were like, okay, you're all laning. We know the enemy jungle is coming then. And you can see Pobolder already left the mid lane. As soon as that all in started, even before Archie showed himself, Pobolder was on his way. Cody Sun stays alive with the Warlords and his own heal. A little bit longer than expected, and now 200 IQ gravity field coming <laughs> down from Paul Belder. And that's three kills for Immortals. You probably couldn't wish for a better start. Flame did use his teleport, had to then recall and go back top lane, so did lose a bit of CS. And we have to see if that TP advantage will do anything for JT. Problem is, it's so early in the game that you can't dive to tower anyway, so Flame will most likely just get his TP back. And the only thing he lost on it was he couldn't use the first TP back to lane. So yeah, he gave away some lane pressure. But that's about it. He shouldn't actually lose much more for his team. Because it's, as we saw in the last game, as we've seen, seen all day long, like TP advantage, it's all about forcing these big plays on the bottom side, these big dives where you get two or three kills and maybe a tower. But this is too early in the game. Well, Poe Bell certainly literally just walked into the mid lane, popped all on Popo, and uh, forced out his ghost. And so pretty happy with that result. Ooh, Death Ray coming across there as well. Dada trying to get in range, looking for the Q. Let's remember this was a first pick Cassiopeia and a forced Orianna ban to first pick that Cassiopeia. So Lots of resources. Yeah, quite an investment from J-Team. Really has to pay off from Fofo. Dada still staying around. He's taking the trade. He jumps on Achi. He's got a lot of damage, but it will be evened up by the Queen's Wrath and of course the Furious Bite coming out there. Uh, Pobalt coming along just for the jump, the flash after from a Fofo, and Donald kind of made that a little bit too easy for the mid laner to pick up that kill. Pobalt to lower mana out of Summoner Spell being chased down. Preyseeker lands in with the Qs as well. Make that the double for Fofo. Yeah. And I mean, I don't really feel like that's a kill or a double kill you can get hyped over because like Donald just kind of waltz into the enemy jungle and die. Yeah, definitely a really weird decision by Dardoch to take the trade. The JT bot lane had already left the bottom side of the map. They were on the way to the mid lane and really nothing you could accomplish because Popol wasn't in position to move first and join the skirmish. It was always going to be Fofo joining. Like if you look at the replay here, Popol comes down but he can't join it because like he has no summoner so he can't just like run over and, and start Buying away at Archie, and that means that Dardoch was just kind of on his own. And then obviously he goes down. Great response from Cassiopeia, and Pobelda dies as well. And that was a great start from Immortal, just kind of thrown out of the window yeah. for a trade that really had had no purpose. And that's always the key thing. You know, like, if you see a, a play that goes wrong, you can be like, oh, but like the idea was smart. There was clearly like was a, a plan maybe. here. Yeah, execution yeah, just sure. went down. Then you can kind of say that's okay. But when you just see a play where there's kind of like, there's really no. No win, win here. There's not really anything you're, you're doing it for other than just trying to force the enemy joiner back to base. Even more weird, right? Because it's coming from Dardog, and we were talking so much about, oh, gotta deny that Lee Sin from Dardog. Oh, he's got his hands on the Lee Sin now. It looks like he might be able to get that early game Still carry. Still a fair statement. I mean, trust me, he will make some plays in this game here, and he he deserves all that respect and credit. This was just like a, a poor decision, and that's yeah. it. You know, you move on. Uh, but the, it's less about that point and more the fact that from what we've seen from Dardoch today in general in terms of his decision making, less about the champions. Because it's not like he mechanically just misplayed that, it was just a bad decision. Sure. Um, and that's what we've seen from Dardoch regardless of the champion he's been on. So I think he may just be having an off day in general. Um, but it hasn't really mattered too much. It's, it's of course partly put them in a situation up against uh, J-Team, but it's a high likelihood they'll come out of this bracket I think, regardless. I, th I think the critique is, is pretty harsh against him. I think he's had some really good games. I do agree there's been some off decisions mm. in, in some of these games, but I think the last game he was one of the big carries for sure, and, and earlier today against J-Team as well. And I'm pretty sure he's going to go off on Lee Sin in this game here. Just knowing him as a player, he's going to... Okay, never mind. Yeah, so, uh, so about that point, Paul. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, I am the analyst now. 
No, I, I still can agree. still go <laughs> off later. <laughs> like, later. I mean, he technically still has 100% cover. I mean, he later. literally just walked straight in there and didn't even <laughs> turn around when he saw the enemy. He did do that, and you've got to turn your back against the Medusa. Has he not learned anything from those old folk tales? Apparently not. Morning, though. He's having a great time. He saw, uh, he saw last game what Flame was doing. Gonna hold that fort because bot lane trading off. Strangle pawns. Jay and BB will jump away from it and jump after Cody's son. Oh, and turn flash away once again. Uh, uh, no, no TP. No TP is coming down. So, oh, just a scuffle. Is coming down. Here's Dardak. He wants revenge now. All right. He's on his way. Return of the Come Dardak. On. Let's go. Pobelter into the bot lane. Gonna gobble up his ADC, but Jay will go down before the great health even comes up. And Ollie snags him with the E, but. Oh, oh hello! <laughs> Death by a touch was enough to finish him off. Okay. Uh, one so that was a one for one. one. All right, cool. And that means Fofo can just push in mid lane now. Immortal's trying to force some plays. Excited for them, never really getting a big advantage with it. Jay just trying to gobble up BB here, so he's not the instant target. And then Jay just takes all the damage and then spits out BB, which is definitely fine. The gravity oh, or the storm nice. just yeah, not so doing close. enough. And then Death by a touch ticking away. And taking down Poe Builder in the end. That's it. Nice. JT getting some good trades in the start. Hang on. Did Cody Sun stay in there? He did stay in there. Alright. I mean, that, uh, that was just greeting for the for the farm, really. Yeah, this is getting a little bit weird. For both uh, teams, it's not even like one team is just like, ah. No, uh, no, but yeah. like, models in this one now have hit, made quite some mistakes, uh, staying for too long or some poor decisions, and they've been punished. By J team, that's Portland Tower taking quite some damage. Archie is here as well to make sure they keep dealing damage to this tower. Don't have to worry about a jungle showing up from the enemy team. So really good uh, position now for J team. Also with Fofo just getting like ton of free farm and free kills in the mid lane. Honestly, yeah. Four zero on this Cassiopeia, almost a hundred CS at eleven minutes. I do think your curses game to Fisher because you were saying, ah, look at this first bit Cassiopeia not really working out. Picks up a double kill and is now four and zero. Dark's well, gonna go off, dies twice in the quick succession. Two, yeah, okay, that right, one for make sure. Make another prediction to no, no. I want to see what happens now. That one definitely is true <laughs> with the Dark one. That one backfired. <laughs> Cassiopeia, Cassiopeia one, when we talked about it, we talked about the investment. We didn't say it was bad investment, yeah. we just said they invested a lot to get it. So far it's been paying off, I agree. Uh, let's see, uh, what can we predict that Third could time possibly go jump. wrong? All right, uh, they are setting up a dive bot lane on the side of J Team. All right, tell me how it's going to play out. This dive will go in favor of J Team. <laughs> All right, let's go, Immortals. Koei Sun pops the ultimate, gets the stun off. And uh, with Poe Belter looking to try and close the, the noose here, might be able to trap them in his jungle. Yeah, this is definitely not going uh, in favor of J Team. <laughs> it's not. Dark's going down. Oh, it's fine. They it's got fine. out. They got out. Oh, yeah. All right, it's, yeah. it's, it's an even-ish trade. It's even. Oh, let's see what Morning is doing. He's coming mid lane. It's going to be in favor of J Team. Oh, nice flash. He comes down. He's going to throw him back into his Prediction team. Prediction God. It's Deficio. He's turning up just like Morning in this game. All coming up, J Team. <laughs> Delayed, but it did happen. Mid tower is gonna take a ton of damage here now. That's Pope Build that gone. 5 0 Cassiopeia and pause you question the first pick. The investment How paid down. off. The investment is definitely paying off for this game here. And looks like uh, Fofo wants to move oh, us to a game three as, well. as a ton of gold. Man, that guy is fed. He is gonna be massive. Uh, I would like to check his mode, but I can't. But Presumably he has a lot, so he's gonna go back to base. He has many Gets components. Morello, building uh, towards Abyssal as well. Needs a Rhylize. <laughs> a lot of items. Yeah, he's pretty big. Five zero zero. Damn. Well, if Fofo can't win this game now, I don't know what's gonna save JT because that is the biggest Cassio if I've seen it like 30 minutes in a long while. Now, uh, it will be. I mean, okay, yes. When you're this fed, you obviously should be able to carry, but. Immortal's comp is actually designed pretty well to deal with things like Cassiopeia that has to kind of like sit there and just kind of spam away, like just spam abilities because yeah. there's like the zone control of like Azira is pretty insane to kind of stop Cassiopeia from getting in range and just hammer away with the twin, twin fangs. There's the gravity field, obviously from there's a Victor. Charge, there's a death charge, there's a point and click from Immortal's. Like, there's so much on Immortal's comp to kind of stop these consistent damage dealers like Cassiopeia from just sitting there and hammering away. 
But that requires him also to get like an even team fight. And that's the problem, right? Once you start falling behind, this Cassiopeia will just start finding people on their own and she will just destroy them instantly and then it doesn't even matter. But I actually think Evolve's composition is really strong in fights, especially to deal with someone like Fofo. But they have to get to those fights without falling further behind. Here's Dardog! Here's the ultimate. Nice flash from Jay. Comes he trying to land uh, those arrows on him. Dardog is taking a lot of damage. Just kind of over time from BB. Comes the Kurt Cold, the knockout from Achi as well. Nice double knock up there. Dog trying to get away. Will safeguard back to his allies. Po Battle with the counter gank. Fofo comes down. And the tick will be enough to finish off Fofo there. Noxious Blast. So, yeah, so much damage. Up another kill to the tally. 6 0 0. Almost the best the Volts could have done there, trying to get out of it once they realized J Team was already roaming. And that's the thing that happens when you lose that mid lane control. Their mid lane can run through the river. Your mid lane has to run through his own jungle, behind some of the camps, and it takes a lot of time getting down there. Poor Builder, obviously not able to react time. Didn't actually see if he was coming from base or from the mid lane specifically, but nonetheless, Fofo could move first, force him also back away, and that's a tower as well, and it's looking real good for the LMS team. Rough times as well when uh, Cassiopeia can solo Dragon and not take any damage from it at all. Gone back to mid lane will carry on farming. Flame try to make this happen. Good uh, W out from morning. I think it's a little late. He'll slam Nautilus against the wall and Dala should be able to pick up the kill here. Ooh, oh there you that go. That was sick. Okay. There we go. He's back. He's back. He's he's back in Lee Sin. That's it. Nice little dodge on the Poppy Ultra from Dala. That's just one kill though for Immortals. Not really able to get anything else. Should just hard push the bot lane now though with Cody Sun. That's so many members on top. They're all gonna die now. That's nice timing. Oh, oh, he missed the wall. No, yeah. He I actually mean, missed the wall. It's it's hard, you know. That that wall does. It moves. It moves. You it's, know. Uh, it's not like it's a stationary object. So that was a bit unfortunate for Flame, but the wall did outplay him. So can't feel too bad about that one. It does happen. Oh, and that means now because they kill Flame oh. so quickly, they can try and TP bot lane. Okay, Morning's gonna defend it. Yeah, uh, the has a sliver of HP remaining. Problem for Immortals is they know if they stay, then Cassiopeia comes down behind them and kills them, so they're kind of afraid committing to the tower. And had Flame just stayed alive top lane a little longer, they would have gotten that bot lane tower. Dalek is here to defend, but he's 1v3. Yeah, he gets the wall jump over the wall, so he's surviving. BB doesn't get that fourth shot on him. Archie, Flame TPing in. They defend the tower, so neither top nor bottom will go down. But the problem is, if you look at your minimap all the time, Fofo is just moving straight from lane, like to the side lanes, the quickest route possible. And again, as we mentioned earlier, Cobalt has to look, run like really far back in the lane and like around these, yep. Take the basically around his own jungle. Because if he ever face checks Fofo, he dies like instantly. There's nothing you can do against him. So it's really difficult to play on your side lanes when your mid laner is just automatically like losing and he can't move fast enough. You can just sit and wave clear on the victor and that's it. Fofo again is moving from their mid lane and they're trying to now just make sure they can take this top tower and they should be able to force Flame away. Seeing as we had so many members from Immortals bottling with the Ash and Zyra before and this tower is so low but J Team never really committed just yet. They still able to push multiple lanes at the same time, and someone has to go back and defend here. will have to be Flame, but he has no TP. Yeah, very much about those TPs, the timing on it, and whether they can uh, make some plays from it. And JT, 9 and 5 currently, do have a pretty good advantage over Immortals. I do have faith in them that they will be able to try and close this one out against them. Alright, wait a minute. I'm not getting blue buff. You're not getting blue buff. I mean, and Pobo we said it. So yeah, yeah. Po battle will just take it anyway. And but top again, lane has inverted. So we're in Australia lanes. We are, but we are still seeing a team, J team, being pretty far ahead right now. So while it is a two v two, Cassiopeia is gonna leave mid lane, and then Immortals bot lane, in a normal situation, would be like right. She might be top. Let's just step away from the tower. And this tower is so low, it's gonna die anyway. And then Immortals are not able to get pressure anywhere else on the map. Uh, they, did, they didn't go for the trade, where they said, okay, we take bot tower. We fully invest on bot tower, you get top tower, we just trade towers. They're actually committing to like defending. But defending is gonna be close to impossible just because Fofo can leave lane first and threaten a dive. And then that tower is so low, and in the end, J Team will get a top tower, and Immortals will not get anything in return. Because this bot lane tower, well, it's just Poppy vs. Nautilus.
group. Uh, Fofo also 2,300 gold over Pobelta currently. Has just finished his Rhylize. He's still stacking up his tier. Uh, Archie just finished his Cinderbook as well. Has that tier map for the early clear. And he's also having a great game. I think uh, slightly overlooked him just because Fofo has been picking up all these kills. But Archie is the one who's been setting him up for them. Dalek is trying to set up a trap here. He's hoping Fofo shows up. And then they can Ash Arrow him and just like take him down instantly. Jin Ulti coming in, and here's the rest of J Team, just as we talked about. That's one, that's the fourth one onto Oli there. Fofo getting kicked out of the fight, but Oli did bleed out, I think, from the Death Fire touch. So, another that's kill to J Team. You cannot defend 2v2 because you can't get a proper team fight up here. You can't get a numbers advantage. It's always J Team roaming first with this massive Cassiopeia. Actually, he just went back. Why did he go back mid? I have no risky. idea. Po Belter. Snared, actually being chased down. Tower somehow still alive. Just a matter of time. It's just and then it time. will die. It'll probably die by itself at this point. Single digits of HP. And Fofo finishes off the mid wave, but interesting he did go back to that mid lane. Bot lane, uh, there's no point talking about bot lane. Uh, and actually clearing out these wards now, so trying to get this vision back away from Immortals. Yeah, it feels like Immortals are trying to outplay their way out of this situation instead of just taking like whatever gold they can and like just hop into a trade. Like Dardak was sitting up there to just basically create that trap, hoping Fofo would show up, they could like Ash arrow him, one shot him, and kind of like outplay J Team that way and stop them from getting their tower, but as expected, J Team obviously just played it super, super safe. Took down that tower. They still have every single tower alive. This bot lane tower is low. You can see it on your minimap how it is taking a lot of damage. But you need the bot lane on that side from a ball to actually take it down. Might be able to get some damage on top tower. Because right now J Team is putting their priority on the dragon that just spawned, which is an infernal drake. And seem to be okay trading it for top tower. Dalek's going to be up there as well. Three members from Immortals will take away this tower, so it will be the trade. Cassio will be down there as well. We'll go down very quickly. In the morning, heading up into the top lane. We'll just collect this wave that is heading towards him. <laughs> Get wrecked, man. It's Infernal Drake. That's Infernal Drake actually taking that one away. Did you even have it over... Yeah, you can yeah, 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 get uh, the ward over the wall. And actually will take away this Rift Scuttler. So, J Team's still in a good position, by the way. 21 minutes into this game, they have a healthy 5,000 gold advantage, the 2 Dragon advantage, the 2 Tower advantage. And now you start playing around Baron. You have Cassiopeia, super, super fit, can destroy Baron so quickly. Ideally, you get blue buff first, and then you go to the Baron, get that extra AP, and also, of course, the mana region. Because you can't really siege properly on turrets with Cassiopeia, against, especially against like Victor, Ash, Zyra. Like, too many things can catch you and too many things can wait clear. So you need to start playing around this Baron specifically. And just play around that top side of the map, enemy jungle, the river. And force Immortals to come close to the Baron and then try and get a flank with Poppy and like start the team fight. There really is no hard engage for J-Team, so they need to force fights near objectives. And not just out in the open sure. field, because they can't really start those fights consistently. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe those two control wards okay. in the Baron pit are necessary because yes. uh, I remember you were talking earlier today that uh, they only have a range of nine Teemos now, so you do need two control wards to cover the entire Baron pit. Old pink wards had a range of ten Teemos when it came to denying vision, had obviously a full vision range of eleven Teemos, mm. also known as 1100 units. But now you get to CJ team, they know what ne they need to do, play around that Baron side. Did lose one of the control wards in there, but there's no wards from Immortals, and we get to see that play where we don't have any engage, so we kind of need you to come to us so we can start the fight. Yeah, that'd be great if you could just uh, engage on yourselves. It's like really the only thing they can do is like Jin pops uh, his ulti, and that's kind of how you start the fight as J Team, but it's so hard to do out in the open. Yeah. Morning, gonna carry on pushing the bottom lane. This has probably been the, the dullest bottom lane of all time for both Flame and Morning, but that's what you what you get when you have double Zero Colossus one, one. users. Both of them. Um, Spirit Visage now picked up, so Morning's not going to die ever. And neither is Flame. Uh, Poe Belter still clearing out minion waves, and we are currently at Cleanup Central, yep. where both teams are just farming minion waves. So here's what we want to see, Pauls. We want to see that blue buff go over to Cassiopeia. We didn't want to see J Team bait it and actually do like a two-man baron with Cassiopeia and like Tom Kench or Cassiopeia and Rek'Sai. 
Sadly, there's no armor on red side, so it's really hard to tank the Baron this early on. You're gonna take a lot of damage when you have only damage items, really, and a Cinder Hulk on your own red side. So it is difficult for J Team to take it down, but you can start it just with two members. Cassie Peter's hammering away with the blue buff. And then by the time it gets low, you move the rest of the team over and you actually take it. Good a force there from J Team with the flash. Mm. Good investment. Nice vision control of the enemy jungle. Cody Sun, whoa, nice flash in from Fofo. We'll have to burn both summoners, put BB and J there for the punish along with Achi. Here comes the curtain call and suddenly all of J team are here in the jungle. Goodbye, Cody Sun, he's dead. Darlock, Pobelta and Ollie trying to get out of their lives. Flame does have his TP if he wants to use it, but the AD carry already dead. J team gets the force that he wanted and look towards Baron. That was such a smart bait. He saw them walk by the blue trinket ward and he was like, no, no I'm just gonna step forward anyway. And then as soon as he saw the arrow, he just flashed aggressively, flashed forward because he knew his team was coming for the flank. And that was how they wanted to start the fight. Dalek has to steal this Baron here, otherwise the Mortals will lose this game. Well, Pobelt is getting a lot of work done. Currently, Flames coming in and lands a bit of CC. He's knocked up by Morning, who is just not taking any damage. He's going to get bowling balled into BB. And that may be enough for J-Team to think twice about taking the Baron. Yeah, J-Team knew that the only way back for Immortals right now is like taking that Baron. So they just stopped and didn't want to risk Dardag actually stealing it. Play it safe. We'll have to go back and reset the whole thing. Can get another try on the Baron. So this is like... Cody actually being able to flash aggressively on the arrow and he knows his team is coming now and they're ready to take the fight. Such a good knock up and then ulti also hitting Cody son Take him down. And then they can start the Baron. Reset the whole thing. If they don't get the Baron within a minute and 30, they go down and take another Infernal Drake. And also they have a lot of summoners down from the side of Immortals, so trying to get those picks will be significantly easier. No summoners on Poe Belter, Ollie, no Flash, Cody's likewise flame. Probably not going to get to pick on him. A Dalek the only one with a Flash on Immortals, so J-Team, if they want to strangle them away from Vision like they've been doing, they might be able to make that play happen once more. Yeah, now with no teleports, they're sending Rek'Sai bot lane. She has her ulti, of course, and she can keep pushing. And if anyone shows up from Immortals to defend it, J Team can just start the Baron and force a 4v5 team fight. So, smart setup with the Rek'Sai, one of the many ways to use the ulti. And now Flame has to go bot lane and try and defend the wave. J Team should be ready now that the wave is hitting tower to go straight for Baron. Yeah, Flame will have a way of. They just let Dada clear Rek'Sai every though. control ward in there. What? Wow. Okay. That was like two, three control wards. Why would you let him do that? That was. The entire setup was like you knew you had Rexai pushing bot lane, and you can always ulti yep. back towards your team, and you just lost your two wards in the Baron pit. They have really one big. left though on uh, Fofo. Uh, yeah, he also had uh, two in the inventory, so he's placed one down now, so he'll be able to place one down in a bit. But yeah, that's a lot of vision they just lost over Baron, and the setup looks so good from them. Yeah, it just feels like as soon as they lost the vision, they they just completely like forgot about the plan. Archie just left the bot lane where he was pushing with a global advantage to run to his team, place one ward in the jungle, and he's now just kind of running around with his team teammates. Stay bot lane, push it in again, force Flame to defend again, and then use your global ulti. Or just go back to the play that you were talking about. If it doesn't work out, just go Dragon now. Yeah, they just take Dragon. Objective. They might try and just dive mid here. cody is sitting top lane. As long as Morning's tanking the tower, he's pretty massive, so he's not really going to be taking any damage, but actually does not pull the trigger. A shame to see J-Team just completely forget about the plan that was actually good. It was a good plan they had, sending the Rek'Sai bot lane, and just because it didn't work the first time doesn't mean you have to just drop it. Yeah. There was still another two minutes on, to play on TP from Flame. There's still Virtue in try, try, try again. So J-Team's first mistake is letting Dardak just cleared two control wards, and then second mistake is just moving Archie away from the bot lane. Really didn't manage to do anything, and Immortals just managed to get TP back from Flame, at least very, very soon, and they got to survive what could have been an almost impossible situation to defend against, where either you lose a tower and they just bait around Baron, or you try and defend and you lose Baron, get a 4v5 team fight. In the end, Honestly, J-Team didn't get a single thing from it. And the later this game goes as well, proportionally the uh, massive advantage that Fofo originally had is 
not as relevant as it was like 10 minutes ago. Uh, he's still pretty big in terms of items, but you take a look at Pobelter now, who is pretty happy on triple items himself. He's dealing comparable damage when it comes to these team fights. Yep. It's not a big advantage any longer. Favor Fofo, so they do get the dragon, J Team. But really what they need is the Baron. That, like the Baron is what opens up for them to actually push in multiple lanes and start getting these towers down. Because you want to just keep pushing the tower away from where the victor is, because he's the man obviously just like button and click wave clearing it. But if you have a Rex side top lane and a Poppy bot lane with Baron buff minions, that's too many waves of Baron buff minions coming in that the models can't defend against it and they lose the side lane turrets. But because J Team just completely messed up a very, very simple uh, Baron setup before, the models are still hanging in there. They are. And they're slowly catching up in gold. Um, Nautilus and Poppy just continue to scale up. And they have and their Poppy TPs po now. Yeah, they have their TPs. And Pobel, unfortunately, like, he's got his voice up now, so he's able to slice through those tanks. So they get into a team fight. And we don't have any control wards in the Baron pit now from J Team. They have a few in the inventory, but they haven't placed them yet. They need to get full control of that river and the Baron pit, and then they need to get some wards behind the Baron pit as well if they actually want to start it. I still feel like starting it with two members while having two other guys sitting in mid just kind of baiting and, and buying time is still effective. Mobile oh, oh, face checking Mobile though. Mobile face checking and getting caught out. He's dropping very low, ticking down from the death fire touch, but it is enough to keep him alive for now. Jump after from Fofo, finish him off with a twin flying Ollie. Also getting pulled off to the side. Quick two kills over to J Team. In with the redemption. I'm not sure what we're looking at currently. Up, oh, flames going down. Call out by five people. I so guess Fisher drops his water. It's all gone wrong for Immortals. Yeah, I guess you could just wait for someone to face check. Really surprising. Oh, blast going hype! <laughs> that was that was sick. Great synergy, but yeah, Popo is running in, face checking, getting caught and dying. All right, this is the time for Dalek to this go off. This is it. This is what I predicted 25 minutes ago. Let's go, Dalek. That's the cue. All right, and I'm making it easy for him. No, not Jay's there. Ah, oh, Jay got one of up. And that was a big threat in from BB as well. So, Dalok not able to make the hero play, and that's Baron over to J Team. Very good for them, but let's just take a look at that face check one more time. <laughs> I'm really not sure because no one was in the Baron pit actually threatening the Baron, so Pobel really had nothing to do there. Ended up just walking into the bush where there's no vision. He gets caught. That's exactly what J Team wanted now. Seeing as J Team couldn't really force it themselves, they had to wait for a mistake, honestly, from Immortals. Get the kills, get the Baron. They've been waiting for that Baron for such a long time. And now with the Dragons, the Baron buff, they can start pushing multiple lanes and get down these tier two turrets and really snowball out of control. It's starting to seem almost insurmountable, honestly, for, for J Team um, and for Immortals to try and come back into this game. And considering how game one went for Immortals, how the start of the day as well went for Immortals, doesn't seem like the same team currently making these critical errors and J Team will capitalize on them. Um, and what a crazy story it would be for J Team to potentially eliminate Immortals here, taking us to match point. Looks like a very likely scenario for them. Yeah, I mean I feel coming into the games today it would it would be hard to like predict that Immortals will be like way better than J Team. So we can't base it on that, but we can base it on that first game we saw today and even the first game we saw of this series where J Team was you know, struggling, especially in the first game of today where they got stopped by Immortals. That's where we can base on saying, okay, wow, surprise, they actually managed to bounce back. But they didn't look much better in, of course, the series we saw just before this one, after BB came back in. We look to get that in him down now. In the middle lane, might be a fight. Nice arrow from Cody, but that will be countered by Jay's Devour. It can't be used for the next couple seconds though, so Flame might be able to capitalize on that, that is one ultimate down. Flame, uh, tank up these ultimate shots, Ollie chunked out of the fight, and that will result in the inhibitor down for J-Team. So, big advantage now, pushing it slow. And the models can't rely on just an Ash arrow and then wait to see if it hits anything, because then Time Kench will just eat that target. You need Lee Sin and Nautilus going in with the Ash Arrow, so when Tom Kench picks one target, you take the other Squishy next to him. It's either Cassiopeia or Jin getting eaten by Tom Kench, not both. 
The models, though, are so far behind, they have to honestly be so scared in every fight, and that's what we see, you know. Dardock and Flame not able to join the fight after the engage from Cody Sun. And looking a lot like a game three. Yeah. Both teams now shown good things and, and bad things. We can definitely criticize J Team's late game setups. Uh, also, just from earlier today, the experience we have with them getting to the late game and how much time they need before they kind of close it out, how much they struggle around with Baron's setups. They get it this time around, have the open in him now. In this game, showing less mistakes than the mortals. There's the curtain call, trying to find this pick in the mid lane. Warning. With no ultimate onto anyone. Flame knocked into the enemy team, but it's not the perfect target you want to have going down. However, Fofo will just slice through him like nothing. So, turns out the pick was okay in the end. BB chunked out by the laser. And J Team with another nice pick. Dardock finding his way into his own jungle. And she brings the bot lane with the rest of his team. And with this pick, it looks like they'll be able to knock down another inhibitor. I yeah, like the decision here to value the towers instead of running down to take an Elder Drake. It is spawning obviously just now. See if you can get down another objective because it's about getting these big towers down to close out the game. Morning. Same for them, no minions. No minions. They got a wave coming, but there is also a Victor and they are out of battle. So, may not be able to take this one at all because Victor exists in the game. J team will read this and back away. Top lane tower would be an easy one, but as Elder Drake is up, why not just take it? The models can fight here. Flame has teleport, but I don't know if there's any wards that can actually TP too. They might have to place a ward themselves to can join. While the rest of J team are taking damage from the Elder Drake, this might be the fight where models can try and get back in the game. Without a big win here, J team will be able to close it out. Morning, still tanking the dragon. Volley. Poking away at Achi. Oh, the dragon dropping low, taken to half. Molly does not land the snare onto anyone. Good block out by Morning. Taking a lot of damage though. Curtain call from BB Morning. He's gonna die here. They will save him. Immortals, maybe if they're able to pick up this dragon, it'll be a good turning point for them. Redemption comes down. Big heal on the side of J Team. Dragon very low, he's gonna end the smite, it's gonna be Pobelta. Immortals dropping two members, so that's three. And J Team with a big punish onto Immortals. They were able to take the dragon, but alas to no avail. Four quick kills, 20 to five. J Team now looking to put the nail in the coffin. Finish off this game, that's the ace. Five and zero. J Team gonna be taking this one to game three. And Immortals is kind of falling apart of the seams here on the of Vicio. And with five members, it's one. Not long for this world. Nexus goes down. J Team, take this to game three. Yeah, Immortals uh, fell apart pretty early on. Around the mid lane, where.